This menacing creature was John Ferguson. Ten years ago, he was the designated hitman for the Montreal Canadiens. Fergie's main job was to beat people up. He was very good at it. Probably the best enforcer ever in the NHL. A real animal. That's why it's sometimes hard to believe that this is John Ferguson today. George? Yes? A couple of things. Right. Brian Hayward. Yes. Fergie, the executive, general manager of the Winnipeg Jets. Two sports publications recently voted him NHL Executive of the Year. He won because he took the league's lousiest team and made it acceptable. This season, Fergie's out to prove it was more than just dumb luck. The population of the Winnipeg Arena is 15,000 and change, when it's full. And it's John Ferguson's job to fill it on hockey nights. He doesn't have to beat anybody up to do it either. All he has to do is deliver a respectable team on a budget that's probably the smallest in the NHL. Well, he must be doing something right. Because last season, the Jets got 48 more points than they did the previous season. That's the largest one-year improvement of any team ever in NHL history. Fergie built this team from nothing, which is what it was when it entered the NHL four years ago. And he built it in his image. Tough, grinding, nothing fancy. They work hard for their goals. Gone are the awful memories of two seasons ago, during which the Jets didn't win a game in 30 starts. But these are the good new days. Dale Howarchuk represents the good days to come. He was Fergie's first draft pick last season. Then Fergie surrounded him with other able young bodies. Three Swedes, four U.S. college players, several from the Canadian Olympic team, most with, like Fergie, an edge of meanness. We have a, a great blend of hockey, European style, uh, Soviet style, Czech style now, and, and an old North American style. But, but basically, uh, entertainment is a uh, the couple one-on-one -on -one fights, I don't believe in the brawling, but uh, certainly that adds for a little, inter little inter uh, entertainment. You enjoy a good one-on-one -on -one fight? I love it. I think it's great. It's great for hockey. Uh, spontaneous things happen. Uh, nobody, uh, nobody's ever been hurt one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you know, it's very trendy now to, uh, they got me this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's very trendy now. Now, that was no able young body. That was Sir Savard. Fergie's old teammate, whom he coaxed out of retirement to stabilize the young Winnipeg defense. How did uh, he happen to lure you to Winnipeg? You'd retired. <laughs> well, he had to do some changes, I guess, after winning only 10 games the, the year before. And plus, he probably need a partner to go to the racetrack. Well, the two of you going to the track together. Who wins? <laughs> well, actually, we went the other day, and we didn't cash one ticket. He's, uh, he's very bad on scoop, so he's, uh, I think he's doing a better job in hockey than he does at the racetrack. To build a successful team, you have to know how to pick horse flesh. Select players who get mad even when they blow it in practice. A successful GM isn't deeper and wiser than most men. If that were true, Fergie'd be in trouble. Okay. Okay. Give me a call back. And now I did tell him that I was going to bring him up at the end of this road trip, but. Uh... All you need is to correctly assess the talent. Not just the usual talents either, but the old-fashioned qualities. Honesty, assiduousness, loyalty. Okay, Michael. It's these kind of eternal qualities he looks for when he scans the roster. Come on, gang. Come on, gang. Game here tonight, boys. Game here tonight, boys. Got less than a win, gang. Come on, now. Hustle talk. That's what Fergie likes to hear. You can do a lot with minimum talent, minimum budget, and lots of hustle. To head these hustlers, Fergie picked Tom Watt last year, a former college coach. The perfect kind of leader for a young, emerging team. Just before game time, and Fergie attends to his grooming. After all, he's an exec now, not a hitman. He's got a budget and an office, even a boardroom. And so to battle. But this is where Fergie squares off now. Rose between two thorns tonight, guys. Every game is report card time for the players, and Fergie and the scouts do the grading personally. Man. 
Understandably, with his exec of the year title on the line, he gets a little cranky sometimes. Here's your Swedish Jap. Even up here in the rafters, he's really down there on the ice. Why did you bring it out? That's bullshit. That's not what the rule's intended for. The rule you just can't keep an old scrapper from picking an argument. Hockey isn't Fergie's only foray into general managing. He runs a racing stable and likes to drop in on the way to the office in the morning and watch his daughter, who's also his trainer, minister to his little darlings. Fergie's been particularly successful as a breeder. Among his triumphs is Merger, one of the fastest three-year-old pacers in North America. Move him up about four lengths in the off track. Yeah. Not surprisingly, he sees not much difference between breeding horses and bringing along a hockey team. When you're running a racing stable in a, and a breeding industry, it's just like a, running a hockey club. There's horses for courses and there's players for leagues. Uh, the International League, the Central League, the American League, and the National League. And, uh, it's the same with the race horses. There's handicap horses, allowance horses, and claimers, and uh, they all fit in the categories. You've got to build. You've got to build with depth. If, you're, if your major league club is doing well, then you make sure your minor league club is doing well. And you always have to have players in your system through drafts or wherever. Jets president Barry Shankaro was one of the group of eight owners who lured Fergie to Winnipeg. Ferguson had had his first taste of general managing with the New York Rangers and was whipping the team into shape when the new owner fired him. We literally picked up the paper one day and saw John Ferguson was fired and said, there's another man, put him on our list, let's call him. And the first time Michael called him, John hung up the phone on him. Winnipeg. Crash. Uh, but after calling him maybe 10 or 15 times, and John expressed a lot of concerns about, you know, my family, they've moved from Montreal, they moved to New York, uh, Winnipeg, you know, where's Winnipeg, you sort of thing. Uh, we finally convinced him to come to Winnipeg, and uh, here he is, and he's happy, I hope, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Winnipeg certainly seems happy with Ferguson. They need something to keep their minds off the economy and the Jets have given it to them. For sure, Winnipeg loves its Jets. John Ferguson is the kind of horse player who's never really counted on a quick score. He's always had to manage with those corny old virtues of stick to itiveness tough slugging, and making do with what you've got. If that isn't enough, then maybe he'll pick a fight with somebody. There are still plenty of battles to be won, but this season in Winnipeg, 10 years after he's retired, Fergie is once again closing in on goal I'm Tom Alderman for The Journal.